Hello, everyone, and fellow cleaning enthusiasts, and if you're new here, welcome. I'm Renee, and I clean, declutter, and organize my followers' homes for free. Today, I'm going to spend all day in this basement to help the homeowners get organized and decluttered. I'll do before and after pictures after each room is completed. Basements are usually a dumping ground for all unwanted items or items you just don't know what to do with. If you've ever glanced into your basement and thought, how did it get so cluttered, then today's video is just for you. We're diving deep into the abyss of basement clutter and emerging victorious with a space that's organized, functional, and clear. So let's get started. First off, let's talk about why basements become the Bermuda Triangle of household items. Basements are out of sight, making them out of mind until clutter becomes too overwhelming. They often become a dumping ground for unwanted items or items you just don't know what to do with or you don't use regularly. But fear not, we have a plan. Number one, decluttering your basement doesn't have to be a Herculean task. Start with breaking it down into manageable sections. Create categories like keep, donate, sell, or trash. Approach it one section at a time to keep it from feeling overwhelmed. Be ruthless in your decision-making process. If you haven't used it in a year, it's probably time to say goodbye. With that in mind, I'm gonna start at the back of the basement and work my way to the outer rooms. This area is gonna be designated as home repairs. It's the furthest away from the main basement area and not used often. To kick off the sorting process, arm yourself with labels and boxes for different categories. Remember, the goal is to make decisions easier. Paint usually lasts once opened one to two years. Most of these paint cans were from the previous homeowner and this color is no longer on the walls. As you sort, consider the emotional and practical value of each item. This step is crucial for separating what you truly need and love from what you can let go of. Encourage mindfulness in your decisions. Does this bring joy or serve purpose in my life? And when will I use it next? Or when did I use it last? I started by organizing like items with like items, electrical with electrical, paint with paint, and tools with tools. Throughout your decluttering journey, you might come across items that hold sentimental value or unique pieces you're just not sure how to repurpose. Here's a pro tip. For sentimental items, consider digitizing your old photos and documents to save space while preserving your memories. Once you've decluttered, think about how you can transform your basement into a more functional space. Whether it's setting up a home office, a craft area, or even a cozy family movie zone, planning the layout and storage accordingly to your needs will make the space more inviting and more useful. Visualizing the end result can be a powerful motivator throughout the entire decluttering process. Incorporating organizational systems that are easy to maintain is key. Use clear, labeled bins for items you need to access regularly and consider installing built-in shelves for long-term storage. If you're working with limited space, vertical storage solutions can be a game changer. Remember, the right organization system is the one that you will use consistently, so tailor fit it to your needs and lifestyle. Remember, decluttering is not just about creating space in your home, it's about creating space in your life for what truly matters. Feel free to drop any questions or share your progress in the comments below. This area is going to be designated for sentimental items. His mother recently passed away and I'll be moving her items from her home that is in the outer basement area to this section so that they can go through these boxes when they are able. But I'll have more on this backstory later. As for your unique finds, think creatively how they can serve a new purpose in your home. An old dresser could be repurposed into a beautiful craft supply organizer, for example.
If you don't have labels, painter's tape is a great way to seal the box and document what's inside. His mother canned these tomatoes. The next area in this room is her mother, who is storing her items in their basement, so I'll consolidate and organize her items. The mother recently moved and will be collecting her items in the very near future. Decluttering can be an emotional journey, uncovering memories and items from the past. It's important to acknowledge these feelings and give yourself permission to let go. Creating a memory box for sentimental items can help balance the desire to keep treasured mementos without allowing clutter to take over. When you're acknowledging your emotions, start by recognizing that it's normal to feel a range of emotions when going through these sentimental items. Whether it's joy, sadness, nostalgia, or even a sense of overwhelm, your feelings are all valid. Allow yourself to feel these emotions as part of the decluttering journey. And also set a comfortable pace. Don't rush the process. Tackle the task at a pace that feels comfortable to you. You might find it helpful to dedicate short sessions over a period of time rather than just powering through and sorting through everything in one go. This approach can help reduce emotional fatigue and make the process more manageable. I've also talked before about creating categories of keep, donate, or trash. For your sentimental items, create another category. Give to friends, give to families, or unsure. Cherish the memories and not just the objects. Sometimes the emotional value of an item is tied more to the memories it represents than the actual object itself. Once again, consider taking a photo of the items you're letting go as a way of to preserve those memories without keeping the physical object. Transforming your basement from cluttered chaos to an organized oasis is an incredible, rewarding experience. Not only does it enhance the functionality and aesthetics of your home, but it also leads to a clearer mind and more peaceful living environment. I have a plan for the white shelving later, so stay tuned. Continuing with the plan number two. Once you've pared down to the essentials, it's time to organize. Invest in shelving units and clear storage bins. Label everything clearly. This not only makes items easier to find, but also deters future clutter accumulation. So the white shelves are temporarily relocated and time to get rid of this moldy drywall. When you are storing items in the basement that it does not have a finished floor, always put down a waterproof barrier or store items in plastic bins. This drywall absorbed the water from the concrete and it is now ruined. Remember, decluttering is a journey and it's okay to take one step at a time. If you feel overwhelmed, take a break and remember why you started. 
The goal is to create space that reflects your needs and makes your space feel at peace. One of these days I'm going to remember to wear gloves and a mask when dealing with mold. It was also very cathartic to get this removed out of the basement. perfect space is closer than you think. Remember, decluttering your basement or any other space isn't just about removing items. It's about reclaiming your space and making it serve your current needs and dreams. It's a process of transformation and not just for your home, but for your life as well. That pile right there is going to be donated. The next area is directly behind the home repair shelves. As I'm opening each box, I'm checking to see what it is and put it in the proper location of either home repair, his mom's, her mom's, or their shelf. I moved everything out so I could sweep the floor. This area is directly behind the area I just swept and would be designated as the holiday area, only used once a year. I'm moving the insulation that is near the furnace to the home repair area. It is not safe to have that so close to the furnace. Measure once, move it, clean it. And now I don't like it. I'll put this in another area so now I can put the storage bins underneath the steps.
When you have items that may spill out of the container, make sure you secure the items so you're not cleaning up a mess later on. Your future self will thank you. On to the next room and starting in the back bedroom closet. Most of the items in here was her mom's, so I moved them to the mom area and removed the cardboard boxes off the floor. This room is pretty simple to do as the guest bedroom. Nothing should be in here but what the guest brings, so I'll vacuum and rearrange the furniture. So comment below, what's the biggest challenge you face in decluttering your basement? Keep pushing forward, celebrate your victories, and no matter how small, enjoy the success. Working forward in the basement still, this will be her new craft room. So here's the backstory. This lovely couple took a big step by buying her mother's home when they moved to another town. But life threw them some curveballs, including the sad loss of his mother, which meant they couldn't finish on packing. His mom's belongings ended up staying in the basement, waiting for a time when he felt ready to sort through them. On her side, there were still items from her mom who started a new chapter in her life, leaving behind a blend of two households yet to be sorted out. They dreamed of transforming this basement into a cozy entertainment space complete with a bar and an aquarium. Most of the items were kitchen or occasional baking or cooking items. I'm putting all the items in one area so she can go through each box and determine to keep, donate, or trash. I'll tackle the kitchen on a different day and some of these kitchen items may find their way there. There was no light in this room so the homeowner rigged up shop lights for me. Now I need to clear a path to get into the closet. Do you notice that there's boxes on the floor? One has her cricket in it and I want to get off the floor as soon as possible so the water didn't ruin the cardboard. Now that I can get into the closet, time to declutter and make this her new craft supply area.
Any home repair items, I gathered up and took them over into the home repair section in the other room. This stand-up jewelry box was her sister's and she picked it up later that day. A quick sweep, and do you remember the white shelving units from the first room? They're going to go in here. By removing everything that was in the closet, it gives you a blank canvas to work with and helps you assess the space available. For sorting and categorizing, when you sort through your craft supplies and other items you've removed from the closet, categorize them by types such as paints, brushes, fabrics, or paper goods. This will make it easier to organize them back into the closet in a way that makes sense to you. Also think about how you use your craft supplies and what you reach for most often. Plan your layout accordingly, keeping frequently used items at eye level and within easy reach. Of course, less used items can go on higher or lower shelves. The pool noodle type material I'm going to use to seal this window is a temporary fix. The cold air was blowing in and I let the homeowner know so they could get the window fixed properly. I'm taking a pause on this room to move to the final room, because in this room, I need to make a path to get to the desks to be able to move them into her new craft room. And once again, I'm going through the boxes and seeing what's inside of them and putting them in the correct location. This is a dog crate that I'm going to put in the back room out of the way. These white cabinets will go against the wall when they finish their basement. This corner is filled with his mom's belongings that will go into the other room on the shelves. As I'm going through his mom's boxes, I'm downsizing and putting like items in the same box and getting rid of trash. That electrical wiring will go back into the home maintenance area. And all of these picture frames will go on the top shelf of the mom's shelving area in the back room. This box was so heavy I had to have help to pick it up. So now that I've cleared a path, it's time to clean off the desks and get them ready to move. Desks are now in the craft room. But I found more crafting supplies in this room. Wait till you see how many cardboard boxes I took out of this basement. Every one of these drawers are full of craft supplies. I was unable to move this rack because it was so heavy and very wobbly. These boxes with red lids are extremely heavy and awkward. I'll be leaving them in their place and they weigh well over 200 pounds or 90 kilograms. So let's get this cabinet out of the way so I can fix this stand. So I got my handy dandy screwdriver and tightened everything up and I might as well check the other side while I'm here. And voila, the stand is fixed and ready to go. So now I can organize the craft room. When I'm putting the craft items on the shelves, I'm putting heavier items on the bottom and lighter items on top. Time to clean the top of these storage bins. The craft items in these bins I left as is because she had them sorted how she liked them.
Again, I want to make use of vertical space and stack these on top of each other. The heavier items are on the bottom and the lighter items in these containers were on top. Next, I want to go through the bags of craft supplies and put them out in the open so she knows what she has. So the crafting container that I had from the other room that I fixed, I moved next to the desk so she had easy access to it. Okay, that roll is a struggle and heavy. Are you ready for the before and after pictures? She loved her new craft room. Okay, on to the last room. Their goal for this basement is to have it finished so they have extra living space. The pool table, and believe it or not, there is an air hockey table back there that they used for countertops to put their items on. Any of the items that I found that were home repair or electrical items went into the other room on the home repair shelving. On to number three. For items you're parting with, consider hosting a garage sale, donating to local charities, or selling online. For bulkier items, look into your local disposal regulations to ensure you're getting rid of things responsibly. He didn't want this drywall, so I cut this up to go with the other moldy drywall. This box had a lot of household and bathroom items, so I put it upstairs for when I do those rooms. Okay, time to clean this ping pong table off and get it cleaned up so we can store it. The ping pong table will be moved across under the stairs. Now that you can see the air hockey table, there's stuff underneath it that I need to take care of. So it looks like most of the stuff under the hockey table was for the garage or laundry room, so I'll carry those upstairs. More empty cardboard boxes. So where is the family today? After touching base recently, life's been bustling for them with new changes. His granddad moved in due to health concerns, and they welcomed a new little one into their family. With all that's going on, the basement project is paused as they focus on family, leaving the space just as it was, but filled with even more love and stories to tell. And number four, lastly, maintaining your new decluttered basement is key. Set a regular schedule to reassess and reorganize if necessary. This prevents clutter from slowly creeping back in and keeps your basement in tip-top shape. I'm so glad I could help this family. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe for more amazing transformations. I walked 12,837 steps, walked by 0.91 miles, and burned off 468 calories. See you at the next home. Music